All right, guys, now that the foundation is completed and it's backfilled, we're ready to move to the next step. Now, when they put the foundation in, the surveyors pinned the corners, and when the form guys came, they put the forms in place, made sure that they were perfectly plumb, they shot grades for the top of the foundation. So now we know that it's, the foundation is located in the exact right place. The next step is we start building with wood. And the first thing we do with wood on a house is we provide for the sills. And that's an important part because it has to be straight and it has to be level because now we're going to build on top of that. Here it will be walls and other places it might be flooring. And if you don't have that perfectly level and straight, you're going to have trouble all the way up. Now one of the first things I like to do is deal with the top of the foundation. They did a great job, but every once in a while you'll see a little nub that's sticking up high and that's going to affect the sill. So just take your hammer and you know, just kind of knock off some of those little nubs all the way down the edge of the foundation and if you see anything in the middle. All right, now before we get started, I want to show you some of the pieces that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to start with this little foam. It's like a moisture barrier, and that's going to go on top of the foundation, just like that. The first layer of the sill will be a 2x6 pressure-treated lumber, and that goes on top of that foam. And the last piece will be this regular lumber, which goes on top of that. So that gives us a 3-inch lift of material. So why do you only use pressure-treated on the first layer? Well, you always use pressure treat at any time you're next to any kind of masonry. Otherwise, it'll start to absorb the moisture and then it'll rot. And that's why we use it there. The second piece, it doesn't really matter. It can be regular dimensional lumber. It's far enough away from the masonry. So now the next thing we want to work on will be these bolts. Now, when the foundation was poured, the bolts were put in by the foundation contractor and the concrete was wet. So it's not unusual that they might not be perfectly vertical. Just take a nut. You don't want to damage the threads by hitting with your hammer. And then use your hammer to start straightening it out. You just have to look each way. Make this one go this way. And this one's got to go this way. So do that to every bolt that you see that's out of place. So now we have to locate the sill, so we're going to snap some lines. The sill is about five and a half inches. We don't want it to come inside of this foundation. So I'm going to go out to five, I'm going to go to five and a quarter, put another one over here, and we'll mark that end and that end, and then we'll snap some lines. Now what I like to do on a long snap for the line is push down in the middle instead of snapping the whole thing and then do each side, and then this one. All right, that's the layout. All right, we'll line up the outside edge with our chalk line. Now we can locate the bolts. So just take a square, and you can mark each side of a bolt. So it's pretty much the easiest way, like that. Like that. With the sill still on the chalk line, I now can measure from the edge of the sill to the center of the bolt. You can see it's about two and a sixteenth. I bring that over here and mark the center of the bolt where we're going to drill it. Okay, you can start to drill right there. All right, one thing I want to tell you about using the bit, we want that hole to be straight, so put the drill back in there. And see how you can see the edge of how deep you're going? Yeah. If you start seeing it go deeper on one edge, that means you're getting out of square to the wood. So just kind of so keep that sure. yep, both yeah. ways. Yeah. You, you look at that hole. If it's even, you're doing great. Okay. All right. Get to this one. Now we're going to put a piece on top of this. All you have to do now is use these holes as a guide to drill the holes for that piece. All right. All right, number one. Okay. All right. 
Now, as you can see, this is not a 90 degree corner, so we have to cut these pieces at an angle. An easy way to cut this top one is to slide another piece of stock just temporarily along the chalk line, and then put on top of that another piece of stock, line it up so it's even on the outside, like that. And I can just take a square, line it up with that edge, and draw a line to make the cut. All right, let's take these off, set them on the ground, and roll out the sill sealer. Okay, now we want to take a washer and a nut. All right, now with the sill secured, we're gonna check for level. Right on there. And right on there, we got lucky today. <laughs> the foundation dies did a great job. However, if there were some dips or bumps in the foundation, we would shim these to be level and we would shim them between the pressure treated piece and this piece, because we don't want to disrupt the sill sealer. And if you put enough shims in here, you have perfect support. So, nice job, Thanks. but we're not done yet. <laughs>